Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. When you got it, say amen. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 7. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains, and he was in the, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Can we pray? Jesus, we glorify you. You are great and holy. Lord, we ask, Lord, that the anointing would flow from your word to my lips, Lord, that I would say what you would have me to say tonight, Lord, that your anointing would be sent forward. And we're going to praise you and give you all the glory in the name of Jesus because of who you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can be seated. I want to speak for just a few minutes tonight, and I'm not going to be too long. On this question, if you will, what are you going to do? We, as well as all the angels, the demons, everything that's ever been created by God, were created for God's pleasure. To serve Him, to worship Him, to adore Him. Can I switch? And as such, everybody has a place. Everything has a place. Everything in creation has a place. Nature has a place. All the rocks are in place where they were put for a reason. The trees are given a reason. But all of those are just landscaping, if we will. What it really comes down to is us, it's souls, it's, it's people, it's the eternal beings, if you will. And in this story, I was reading it not too long ago, and I was thinking about this man who had been demon-possessed. And it would sound like he's demon-possessed for a while, because he lived in the tombs, he wasn't near anybody, they couldn't control him, they tried to chain him up and he just kept breaking free. He was always getting loose. So somehow he got segregated to this area where he wouldn't hurt anybody else except for himself. And when Jesus showed up, when Jesus came off the boat, off the ship, immediately this man came running. And the demons in him, I've, I've thought of this verse and I thought, when you read what he says, it obviously was not the physical humanity, the man inside that came running to Jesus. Because when the words were spoken, it wasn't the man asking for mercy. It wasn't the man saying to Jesus, it was the demons inside saying, don't torment us. And I thought, wow, the demons, the demons, when they knew Jesus showed up, came running to him and worshipped him. Because it says when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. The demons, the same demons who back in the beginning, when Satan fell, that fell with him. These demons, we don't know what hierarchy they were. They could have been right next to Satan when he fell. They could have been the little guys down the pole. All we know 
is that these same demons were angels who had stood in heaven and worshipped God and they got cast out. But they knew enough when Jesus showed up to come and worship. And if you think about it, what did they call him? They said, Jesus, son of the most high God. You know why they referred to that? Because they were there in the beginning. They seen the most high God in action. They knew exactly who he was. They didn't have any doubts as to who this man was. And I thought, here it is. Demons, the Bible says that he called, they called themselves legion, for we are many. Here was a group of demons who had taken over this man coming to worship at the feet of Jesus. Think about this. They come worshiping knowing what their eventual fate is going to be. At that time, they knew because they had been cast out, so they knew from that point on they were condemned at some point in time, they were going to be in a lake of fire and they were going to be in hell with Satan because of what they did. But yet they still had the presence of mind to come and worship at the feet and beg for his mercy. And I thought, how often have I seen, if I could say this, born-again Christians, if you will, sit in the presence of God and never, never fall at the feet of the Master to worship. Never come to His feet to worship Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. Never come to call upon the mercy that He shows. Because probably these demons said, you know what? Maybe by some stroke of luck, he's going to have mercy. Maybe he's really going to have mercy. Problem for them is they've already been judged. They've already been found guilty of their sins. But us, we have an opportunity. We have the chance that even when we fall, we can come to the feet of the Master and beg for mercy. Because we, we are the ones who were born again. We've been blood-bought. When Jesus shed his blood on the cross, it was not for the demons that were in that man. It was not for any demonic spirit that ever has been. It was for that man. It was for his offspring. It was for us. It was for humanity. And so, when Jesus showed up and the demons began to worship, you would think people would begin to see something. And, if you continue further on, after the man was delivered by Jesus. The Bible says that he was in his right mind worshiping. Worshiping at the feet of Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. So can I say something is this, is that if demons know enough when Jesus shows up to come running to worship, what should that do to us. What should that do for us? Because we are, as the Bible refers to us, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The demons never came out of darkness. They're always going to be there. And they still knew enough. What should that do for us? Every opportunity we get to be in God's presence and worship of Him. We should be as the people of God. We should never take for granted any moment 
We should never take for granted any opportunity. Every time that I can stand or every time I can kneel in the presence of my God, I need to be doing it. Because you know what? If the demons come running every time, if they come running when he shows up just because they're trying to beg his mercy, what should I be doing? I don't even have to come begging his mercy. He's already given it to me. What I'm coming is to thank him because he saved me. He brought me out of the darkness into the light. Every time the opportunity arises as the church of God, we need to be clamoring to the feet of Jesus. Because you know what? The devil doesn't want you worshiping God. He really doesn't. Because when you begin to worship God, when you begin to worship Him in spirit and in truth, you get in there and get really get a hold of this. You get a new song. The Bible says you get a new name. And when you get to be transformed into the likeness of God in that way, when the new song begins to come from within, when the old song has gone away, that man who was possessed for years, he cut himself with stones and he did all this stuff to himself and he broke the chains and he probably beat up people and all this stuff, and people were terrified of him. When they came back, he was at the feet of Jesus worshiping. The new song began to come forward because he came in contact with Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. <clears throat> the devil does not want you to have a new song. He does not want the people in the church who've gotten a new song and a new name. He does not want that on display. He wants you to sit and be quiet. He wants you never to worship God. He wants to destroy your worship. If you think of it in this way, the Bible says, as I've said more than once now, the man was found clothed in his right mind, worshiping Jesus. Maybe, perhaps, the only way that Satan and the demons could keep this man from worshiping God was to possess him. We don't know anything of this man before that. We don't know what he did for God. But I'll tell you this much. Satan uses what he can to keep us down. Maybe perhaps this man would have been tearing it up, spreading the gospel like John did, but somehow they tricked him and they got him bound in chains, spiritual chains. So sometimes in the church, the devil, he manages to get in there and steal our worship. He manages to cause us not to give it quite what we could. To take away our joy. To take away our new song. To thank you, to make you think that your new name is not real. Because what I see in today's society is he sort of works this way. He deceives people by th making them think with humanism that they are a God and that you don't need God because you're enough of a God already. Because he told Eve, he said, if you eat of that tree, you're going to become as a God. Humanism at its roots. Or, he makes people think that they aren't worthy. Makes them think that they're not worthy to worship. And most of us, at some point, even in the church, have seen that one. Where we're trying to live for God, things aren't going the greatest, and he gets in there. He plants that seed of unworthiness. Plants that to make you think that you are not worthy. And you know why? Because that new song that you have, that new song that is in your spirit, that new name that was given you by God, if He can keep that suppressed, He can defeat you. 
Because if you ever get to the point where your new song begins to bubble out all over the place, when people see it in your life, they're going to know something's different. They're going to begin to ask questions. Well, how come you are like this? How come you're not like this? How come this? How come that? And then you begin to tell them. You're allowed to tell them because they've asked you. You get the opportunity. To say, oh, you want to know? Well, here's my new song. I'll guarantee you from that day forward when that man, when anybody seen him, they were like, the last time I seen you, man, you were like killing people and you were cutting yourself. And you were, He said, yeah, you know what? He said, I came in contact with Jesus, the Son of the Most High God, and all those demons that held me bound, that legion of demons, they had no power, they had no authority over him. And when he spoke to them, they were gone. So every time, every time, I believe, we get an opportunity to worship Jesus. We need to do it. Because being in God's presence is magnificent. It's magnificent. It's awesome. Just, just to be in His presence when the waves of glory come over you is phenomenal. It's one of those things that I live for. I love that feeling. But yet, when I begin to switch it from just being in His presence, when I begin to switch it into, I'm going to worship God for who He is and what He's done. It changes it all. Then, the new song begins to come forward. Then, the joy begins to flow out of my spirit because I realize what He's done. Because I look at it this way. If the demons who have already been judged, cast out, cast away from him, if they come running and kneel down at his feet when he shows up, what should I be doing? What should I be doing? Because you know what? They know they're never going to tread upon the street of gold. They're never going to own a mansion that was built by God. They're never going to sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb with Jesus. They're never going to look at His nail-scarred hands and go, He put those there for me. But when we look upon Him, when we see Him, we're going to be able to look at all that stuff and go, You know what? He did that all for me. He did every bit of it for me. When you begin in your walk with God to understand what He did for you, when you begin to get a joy for the deliverance that He's given, the things He's done, the protection He affords us, when you look at this world and all that's going on in it, and to know that I have a hope. To know that I don't have to be bound in chains of discouragement. I don't have to be bound by chains of drug addiction. I don't have to be bound to alcohol. I don't have to be bound to all those other things in the world that people are bound to because they're grasping at something, they're trying to find something to worship. Because you know what? Here's the way it works. When the demons see Jesus, they come running to worship Him. Because they're terrified of Him. Why do you think they want to get you and I onto other things? They don't want you and I worshiping God. They want us depressed and down and out and hooked on all this other stuff. They want us to think, even as Christians, 
that we don't have what it takes, that we're not worthy. They want us to think, that, you know what, you can't do it. You might as well give up. You can't witness to people because you're not worthy of that. You can't pray for people because you don't have the, the faith of a June bug. They want us to think that it's all downhill. They want us to think there's nothing we can do. And I'll tell you why it is. Because they know the power that lies in worshiping Jesus. And I don't know, many theologians would have their opinions, but on that day when they came and worshipped Jesus and begged him for mercy, if you will, they then said, they knew they were getting cast out. That wasn't a, oh, leave us here. So they said, allow us to go into the swine that was grazing. And somehow, maybe, because they had enough sense to come and worship at the feet of Jesus, the Son of the Most High God, he said, you know what, maybe I'll humor them today. And because they've come and bowed their knee and begged for mercy, I'm going to give them a little mercy today. And those demons, I'll guarantee you, every spirit that attacks you, because before I go a little further, I'm almost done. I'm going to make this point clear. Anybody in here who thinks that you're not under spiritual attack every day, you're mistaken. This life is a battle. People, some people, yeah, I know, I know Christians who don't really, they think it's all, it's sort of like the coming of the Lord, the Whatever. There's people who don't think that we fight a spiritual battle. But we do. And I'm not going to take the time to convince you tonight. Just believe me, we do. So can I tell you this? That those demons, they see what happens when you and I fall at the feet of Jesus and worship. One thing, they experience it themselves. They know what worshiping Jesus is about. They know what worshiping the Most High God is about. And can I tell you that they know when you, when you begin to worship God, what it does. That's what he loves. He absolutely, 100% adores it when we as his people come and fall on our face or raise our hands or begin to proclaim who he is. And so when we stand as the children of God, we begin to worship Him. You not only get His attention, but there's a spiritual realm there that sees what's going on. And that's why it's so important for us as the people of God, to decide what are we going to do. We can come to church and we can just sit in the pew, sing a few songs, and pretend that we're, you know, we're really in this. But we can decide that every time somebody says, let's worship God, we can be like, you know what, hey, I want to worship God. I'm going to be the first one to worship God. I'm going to be the first one to my feet. I'm going to have my hands raised the highest, the longest. I'm going to shout the loudest because I want him to hear my voice. Because sometimes that's what it takes to get anywhere with God. Sometimes it takes that desperation to say, you know what? I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to worship Him. I don't care if nobody else is. I don't care if everybody else wants to do their own thing. I'm going to worship God. Because that's what heaven's all about. That's what's going to be with Him is all about. It's about worshiping. And 
who he is. Can we stand tonight? He is more than worthy of any praise we can give him. And he loves it when we do it. And so, if the demons know enough, if the demons know enough to worship him, to beg for a little mercy, what should the people of God? We've already got the mercy. He wants us just to come and worship him for who he is. Because he is so worthy of all the worship. We're going to gather around tonight. We're going to worship God a little bit. So my question is to you, what are you going to do? I'm going to give you the glory, and I give you my praise, oh Lord, you are only, I worship you only, for all of my days, I'm going to worship you, Jesus, lift my heart and my hands, I want to worship you, Jesus. I'm going to give you the glory, and I'll give you my praise, Lord, you are holy, I worship you only for all of my days, I'm going to worship you, Jesus, lift my heart and my hands, I want to worship you, Jesus. I'm going to give you the glory, and I give you my praise. Lord, you are holy, I worship you only for all of my days.